Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where I talk about TV shows that are crime dramas. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Mayor of Kingstown, Season 3, Episode 6. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. The moment we had the opening to the episode, I was like, oh god. It's like, we're opening with Rhonda. I was like, this isn't good. This isn't good. I was like praying. I was like, at the very least, the place is going to get hit. I just didn't know how it was going to happen. And I was like, if it happens, just let the shop get messed up. Don't let anything happen to Rhonda. And lo and behold, Rhonda is dead. You're just hoping like, maybe she caught a stray or whatever. She's good. They can take her to the house. Nope. Dead. Because she caught like three bullets. You're like, because at first you're like, it's a very specific spot to hit. So they knew that it was like. I guess, like, word is, like, I guess you can get that information knowing how important that place is to Bunny. Because yeah, I, I keep saying, like, Rhonda was his sister. I, I feel like she was, but maybe I'm misremembering. Maybe it's, like, a cousin thing. Whatever the case may be, that's uh, that's Bunny's family. And obviously it's like, damn, dude, that sucks so much. Especially because you're almost like, well, last episode was setting up the death flags because she was talking about what she wanted to do for the what she her plans for the future. And it's like, yeah, you make plans, God laughs, you know? And especially because she it's emphasized a point and they recap this too of her being like Bunny protects his and that's also the short the sad of it all that Bunny couldn't protect the, her in this moment and just the devastation of like it's a thing of would this have happened if Bunny hadn't hit the Russians like he did previously it's like well this isn't just the Russians this is also the Aryans too so it adds a layer to it so Mike's calling Kareem to like put uh. Callahan and um, Adtech just to get him away from everybody so he's not able to kind of dish out orders. Granted, it's like if, if, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen regardless. You might be able to kind of at least like at least slow down the process a little bit, which even Mike was kind of like, are you OK? Because I think he was like Kareem was a little too OK with doing. He's like, whatever you need me to do, I'm going to do it. It's like he was too OK with it. It's like usually I have to like it's like pulling teeth with you. I have to try so hard, but it's like, right. He was just so compliant in this episode. But also, like, did he... Like, was his left eye jacked up? Like, it looked like he got hit or something. Like, punched or something. Or, like, looked like he had a cut on his face. Or maybe just his eye was blacked up a little bit. I was like... I was like, what? I was like, did I miss... I don't, I don't remember anything like that coming up last episode. Maybe it did. I was just like, what was that? Because like, he just... He seemed out of it. And... I mean, he's touched on the family situation. But we haven't seen them at all. And I don't remember if his wife and kids, like, moved out or whatever. Oh, he has multiple kids, right? I don't remember. But his family moved out. And we hadn't seen them this season, so I'm like... I mean, Kareem says like he's going through it, just not sure what exactly, so... Then there's a whole situation where, like, Carney's meant to find out how the Aryans are managing to get, like, drugs in and stuff like that. It's like, how are they doing that? And it's not making any sense. And they've checked the places, they've checked all the people, but somehow the Aryans are still making a move. But it turns out they're doing it through, like, the uh, bumpers. Because Carney noticed, like, wait, to change the oil, you don't need to take off the bumper. So I guess it's like, they were checking underneath the cars and might have been actually in the bumpers themselves. Or something like that. But it seemed like that would have been what it was. Because Carney figured it out. But the problem is Carney's kind of off. Well, he got this information to Mike. But he got roughed up because of some of the uh, guards that are on duty that uh, work with Callahan. We kind of knew what time it was when they were kind of making a point with Raph. When it was him and his um, his wife or uh, what his SO were talking about him and his son. Like after everything with Rhonda. Because, like, his SO was like, yeah, I've got another funeral I have to go to. And Raph's like, kind of pick a new school for their son to go to. And she's like, it's a gifted program. He's like, yeah, but there's different schools. There's different places. It's like, just let him know I'm proud of him. Because Raph's like, I don't know how this is going to swing. Like, I am in charge of this game. But, like, anyone, like, even if you're at the tippity top, anybody can get God. And I think with this whole Ronda thing, it just kind of solidifies even more. Like, on the outside, even someone that close to Bunny wasn't even safe, you know, someone there, and, you know, just, like, you are literally in the middle of the lion's den, I'm sure, like, rap is feeling that, too, so, but, yeah, they were, they were, I mean, yes, it's the whole thing of, like, whoa, 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 what are you doing, did he pass you, contra did she pass you contraband, I get it to some extent, but, once again, they were also, like, starting shit just for the purposes of, like, putting, um, Raph in, like, ad seg himself, I think, because he's in, he's, I don't think that's his cell, I think he's probably in, like, I don't know if ag seg. I mean, it's like it's the segregated cells. It's like I don't know if it, I don't know if that's supposed to be the same thing as solitary confinement or not. It might not be. It might be something similar. Maybe it's in between gin, gin pop and 
uh, maybe it's you know ad sync is like the middle ground or maybe it's the exact same thing as um, solitary confinement but either way while he's kind of removed off the board, it makes him harder and harder to kind of operate. And it, I guess he also looks at it as like, yeah, it might be like kind of like puts removes me from the board a little bit. Like things are going to move on its own pace, but I am the leader. And if I'm removed from the board, just like, uh, I mean, I think that, you know, because I can't remember if like, yeah, I think that happened to Raf before Callahan got put sent to AdSec, I think. So I think both of them have kind of been removed from the board. But to be fair, like, that's kind of a moot point for Callahan, considering he's got the guards on his or like some guards on his side. To be fair, Call uh, Carney found out about the really quickly. I uh, found out about the the drugs and stuff uh, around Jackson, which we know he is Bunny's. Like I said, I believe if I remember correctly, cousin. So. My thinking was just that if Jackson knows about that, then that means Bunny knows about it, and Bunny can kind of strike and utilize that to his advantage. But to be fair, like, Carney never explained in front of Jackson what he figured out, so not unless Jackson later on figures out what Carney figured out, I don't know. It just felt like that could be an issue, because once again, no one knows that Jackson is tied to Bunny in that regard. But yeah, uh, Carney got the living crap beat out of him, so... I love the whole thing of like, oh, who do you work for? And it's because it's like, oh, I can't believe you're taking waters from a Kareem. But I'm like, who is it supposed to be that he works for? It's like, I guess like as a white prisoner, you're supposed to work for Callahan. I guess that's what that's supposed to mean. It's like, well, he was like, who do you work for? It's like, Cardi's probably like, at what point did I ever say like, I was cool with you bastards. You're all prisoners to me. Like, I've got no allegiances to you. Like, I'm, this job is my job and that's where my allegiances lie. With, in the aftermath of all of uh, the Ronda stuff, Mike wants to basically serve an order to uh, Cabo just for the purposes of, like, he knows, like, all of this was meant to bait uh, Bunny into making a move. But it's like, right, because Bunny was like, yo, I'm out in the open. They want to come after me. I'm going to take a shot. Like, I'm going because I can't back down because if I'm not out front and center, it's going to show weakness and I can't back down. Like, it's a pride thing, but it's also like a show of strength, but they're counting on that. So Mike's like, be smart. So he's striking the Russians just to like kneecap them as best he can. He also prevent like Bunny from doing anything right now. So he's like, Chives wants to kind of kneecap it on both fronts, kind of getting Callahan and Adseg while also trying to confront Constantine. Which he sends in SWAT, and he had made a point to Robert, like, don't even load your guns. But Robert's like, oh, stuff is happening. He's like, no, we've got innocent people on the inside. He's like, he knows how Robert, like, once again, Robert's the lesser of two evils most times. So he kind of fine with Robert doing what he does, despite, like, how much of a, like, shit show it can be, you know, especially, you know, from El uh, Evelyn's perspective. But it's like, yeah, he definitely doesn't want shit popping off, considering Iris is on the inside, so... Warrant gets served and everything. Iris plays her part, tries to attack uh, Robert, who's arrested, like like being hardcore towards um, Constantine, and he kind of elbows her, and Kyle has to pull her away, and just like, no, nah, it's fine. Kyle definitely didn't mention it to Mike, because Mike was like, who did it? Who did it? And, Mike, and Kyle was like, yeah, like, there was just so much going on. He's like, no, no, he knows who expressly did it. He knows it was Robert, but he just, it's like, the last thing you want to do is report that to Mike, because if Mike finds out, it's like, cool, who would have told Mike none other than Kyle? Kyle just got the gig. He's not trying to cause any smoke. But also, he recognizes uh, Robert being like, fuck, fuck. I wonder, does Robert know he fucked up? Because he's like, shit, that was Iris. Like, I wonder, did, is that why he's doing that? Because it's like, because him getting back in the field immediately, like, he's not right in the head for it. So, I don't know if it's a culmination of just him being like, crap, like, this is getting to me. I thought I'd be good. Or is it because he knew he struck Iris and he's like, fuck, I fucked up. I fuck, 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 fuck. Mike's going to be pissed if he finds out. But once again, Kyle covered for you. Because he's like, yeah, Kyle doesn't want, like, he doesn't want Mike bringing down his wrath because that'd be a, an issue, so... That is kind of the interesting thing. Once again, like, you let some of the stuff Robert does slide because it's just necessary. You're, I don't know if he'd even consider him and... Because him and Ian are friends. Him and Stevie are friends. I don't know if Mike could, would consider him and Robert friends. Kyle would consider Robert a friend. Like, him and um, 
Tracy, like him, Kyle and Tracy, like they're they're a couple friend with uh, Robert and his wife. But I don't know if Mike would consider him a friend, like an associate. Like we work together, we're we're decently tight knit, but like he, I mean, but he even agrees with Evelyn sometimes. I'm like, yeah, Robert can go crazy. It's just I, I don't know. So. He, to my point was like, right, he let a lot of stuff Robert does slide, but until like, it's like, oh, you potentially hurt someone I care about. Especially later on when Mike is like, because Mike tried to call Iris to get out of there before the raid happens, but it's like, I can't. And she's like, right, if she goes to lunch beforehand, that's just going to look extra suspicious. So Mike's just like, when I call, because calling you is a danger to, as well, but it's like, I'm making that risk. So when I call, do what I say to do. And she's like, right, this is a better thing. Like, I did the smart move here because she's like, Constantine, I'm just like his fun buddy he can do drugs with. Like, the moment, like, I'm no longer that, I'm deader than, and quick, I'm dead quicker than Tatiana. She's like, I'm nothing special. And he says, well, you're special enough. Now, I feel like that could be interpreted two ways. Maybe it's only one way it's meant to be interpreted. Because one, it's like, right, you're special enough to Constantine. Like, the fact is he does have an affinity for you. We don't know fully what that history is, but he does seem to care a lot about you. Two, that what special well enough could also just be like, yo, like, you're special to me. So, like, I'm not going to, like, I'm scared for you. He's just like, please do what I say. Because he's like, he's so scared about her being in this circumstance. Yeah, you get some information, but he's so scared that she's going to die. I'm sure the Rhonda thing, too. I mean, it's a culmination of Tatiana, the baby. Now this whole thing with Rhonda, it just, it's a very scary, scary situation. So, staying with Mike. He has a um, he has that conversation with Bunny because Bunny went to like a funeral and I thought it was like Rhonda's, but I think like it had not enough times passed for there to be like her body to be released and a funeral and everything. I don't know if that was his mom or maybe that was an aunt or whatever, but he was talking to her old lady being like, "I'm sorry." She's like, "What do you have to be sorry for about what you were raised in?" Basically, it's like you ending up where you are. It's only like right. It like she's not going to blame him because it's like this is your environment. Like you can't really change. Like how can you change what you grew up in? It's all you've known and you made the best out of it you could especially once again like it's what Rhonda put up I talked about last episode that Bunny protects what's his and it's like he does what he does by protecting himself he protects us like he looks out for his community and he's talking to Mike about like yo this guy like they go to like a guy's wake and it's like oh yeah this guy was an OG he's like I knew this guy back when I was like yay hi and he talked about this guy like he did a lot to protect his family he grew like he lived he survived this like being in the gang world he so he raised his family he sent them off but he stayed and what happened home dude died of old age that's a blessing the fact is dying of old age is not a guarantee in any aspect of life but in the gang world being able to die of old age is a rarity and a luxury and it's just kind of that thing of like can you even imagine that and mike doesn't say anything i'm like i don't even know if mike thinks about the fact is like i don't even think it crosses his mind that like oh I, I'll live to be an old man. It's like, no, there's a good chance I'm going to fucking die well before my time just because of the line of business they're in. And it's just like, it is a thing of like, what is it? What, what kind of like, what a thing to be able to die of old age. And it's like, I don't think Bunny really thinks that's possible, but it's like, yo, this OG did it. But now it's like, yeah, like, you know, Rhonda, not even directly tied to this, still doesn't even get to die of old age. It, it puts the whole mortality thing into question, and it just kind of makes you go like, right, I might not have the reach I thought I could because I couldn't protect what's important to me. Uh, there, there's there's a lot running through Bunny's mind right now. And I'd love, too, that the entire scene, like, Mike is quiet. He doesn't say anything. He's just there trying to support Bunny in whatever way he can. He knows, like, yo, like, nothing I can say will matter. And it's also, like, Bunny also knows and means a lot for, like, Mike, considering, like, right, you you've lost a brother and the mom so it's like it you know i think just the company it, it, the friends that they are just that in itself and is enough so we had uh stevie and ian taking their crack at constantine specifically throwing out the whole baby situation is like right you you because they didn't he didn't just shoot Tatiana in the head. He did a couple body shots and then finally shot her in the head. Just a double tap. And left that baby in there. And the baby was chewing on his own hands to survive, you like piece of shit. And they, he was like, oh, like, I forgot how... How Constantine brought up Mike. 
But he's like, oh, okay, I see what it is. He's like, I see you guys. Like, right, who's the cops and who's the criminals? And he's, but he's like, I see you. And I love Ian being like, I see you too, fuckface. It's like, yeah, you're already on a shit list because of everything that you're mixed up in. It's like... We found a little drugs and stuff. He's like, yeah, I don't really own the place. Oh, yeah, because he was referencing Milo and then, like, referencing Milo as an associate of Mike. So it's like, yeah, if you want anything to know about Milo. And he's like, yeah, this whole operation. He's like, that was Milo's thing. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't really own the place. It's like, yeah, but you do have to be held responsible for, hey, the drugs we found there and stuff. But he's, he's brushing it off, which we learned from Iris. He's bringing in... Um, European models and shipping them and... Uh, was he selling them? Like, I forgot what, like, the motive for, like, bringing in those girls are that he's going to send out. I think it was, like, I don't know if it was, like, they're coming across the border or whether he's sending them across the border. I, I can't remember what uh, Iris had said in that moment. Mike also has his um, his talk with Callahan, and he's trying to get Callahan to back down. He's like, cool, you made a deal with the Russians. You didn't let me know about that. So it's like, right, I'm trying to keep some form of balance. But Callahan's like, bro, there's never been any balance to all of this. And he's like, yeah, before you came to Kingstown, we got pretty close. He's like, no, before you came back to Kingstown, we did. And Callahan was like, no, you didn't. And he made this whole, what was it called, the Ecotone? It's basically where two living communities come together as he used he was like the fields and the forest or like the mountain and desert he's like it's the luscious place but it's also like where predators hunt and it was a whole conversation about predators it's like right you know when this is all said and done constantine's going to kill you he's going to get rid of you because constantine will eat his own we've seen it might seem the end result of it but it's like right as long as i'm feeding him it's fine it's like yeah but that's the problem constantine has a, a rabbit hunger once again he wants everything you know so who's to say he won't gobble up what's yours like that's the problem you always think you have the beast on a leash until the leash snaps you know and, or until the beast tears the leash itself and then rips you to pieces especially because there was like that whole metaphor early on about Oh, like that uh, rabbit being ripped to pieces. Meant, I guess it was meant to be poetic how that all comes together. It's like, yeah, it eats what it needs to, but leaves all the shit behind. So the fact is Callahan and his boy came across it. So maybe that confirms it for Callahan even more of like, yeah, like as long as the predator's fed, like there won't be any issues. But it's like, yeah, I'm curious to see if that ends up being the case. Like, I don't know if Callahan plans on killing Constantine before Constantine could kill him, or is he just that confident? Like, nah, Constantine won't do that to me. And if foreshadowing irony will be that he will, in fact, do that. Like I said, it might just be a thing of Callahan might get him before he can get him, and that might be his long play, but who knows. You kind of just, like, want Callahan to get his. You want Constantine to get his, but in what shape or form that's going to come, we'll have to wait and see, but... Essentially, Callahan laid it out to Mike. It's like, you want things to kind of be okay, then you need to hit Bunny. You need to make sure Bunny kind of loses some of what he's got because he's gained too much ground. So we need to kind of nip that in the bud. Or you let me run things my way. And it's like, Mike's not going to let that happen. It's like, I'm not going to let you have your way. He's also not going to hit Bunny like that considering he's like, well, you know, you know, Bunny holding it down like he did last season, going along with the other leaders, going to prison and stuff. But also, it's like he's tight knit with Bunny enough, especially after everything Bunny lost this episode. It's kind of like I'm not gonna do that, especially not for you, Callahan. So placating you just for the purposes I'm trying to figure out what you want, so we can get you to fuck out of Kingstown and, and deal with you in whatever shape or form that might mean. So. He's basically telling Mike, he's like, you have to make a decision because Mike has to make the decision or the decision is going to be made for him as things are going to continue to sprawl out from all of this. So it's definitely going to be interesting. Oh, I was about to wrap up, but I completely forgot there's one more storyline I want to talk about. Um, that's the situation with Tracy. She interacts with the uh, that prisoner she met last episode, the one that's pregnant, and... I, my assumption was like, right, the guard she killed is why is the baby dead. I could, I thought they like straight up did hook up, right? I think they did. I know she said afterwards like, oh, he assaulted her, but he didn't. But Tracy was like trying to help her because her water broke and she was going into labor. But there's rules of, yeah, you need to kind of keep her like handcuffed. It's like, right, we need her to be able to move her legs and bend them for the purpose of giving birth. But it's also like, it's a, even the guy cop is like, yo, I know it's a silly policy, but it's a policy for a reason. It does protect us. It's like, yeah, she is someone that is, we, is, isn't afraid of like 
slicing and dicing if she needs to. But that was like she was ordered to do that, if I remember correctly. I, I can't remember why. Like, what, like, didn't she kind of get orders from high up? I don't think it was Bunny that gave those orders. It was someone else, right? I actually don't remember why she did that. I don't think that was, like, on her own. Like I said, I feel like Bunny might have orchestrated that. I just don't remember. But either way, Tracy brings this to the warden, which, like, she was saying, like, right, that situation. I guess, like, I, I, my assumption was it was associated with that. But I guess based on what Tracy's saying is that particular situation happened so long ago that it's like there's no way, like, she would be – obviously, that pregnancy is what it is now, meaning it had to happen in the past year. And that – even though that was season one, I don't rem I don't know how much time has passed since season one. It probably has been, like, probably, like, a year or two or something like this. So enough time frame where it's like, no, the pregnancy definitely happened after the fact because it probably would have come up before now because she was saying the whole thing of like she hasn't had a conjugal visit in like three years like i said i don't know in that time frame when the situation in season one happened like was that real time like two years ago or not or is it like is it 2024 in the show or is it 2023 because i don't know if this is one of those shows that was like held off because of well probably a culmination of like the strike plus Jeremy Renner's uh, health. That's also another thing. I, I I meant to bring this up earlier, and I'll tack it on here since I referenced Jeremy Renner. I, I meant to bring it up during that scene between Mike and Bunny. The whole, like, oh, like, isn't it kind of like, isn't that a nice notion to be able to kind of die at an old age? I was like, there was almost like a, I don't think it was meant to be this, but there is a level of, oh, there's kind of something sad and meta about that, considering, like, how close Jeremy Renner killing came to dying because of the whole snowplow situation. And you're like, I don't, I, I'm probably reading way too much into it, but it just felt a little too, like, mm, like, I was just thinking about that after the fact of, like, it oh, came super close to not being able to just kind of die of old age just kind of a, a terrible like tragic accent like that but either way you know once again you know happy that he's still with us and you know i'm sure his family is too but either way tangents and all that aside Either way, I went on that massive tangent. The point is, Tracy brought this to the warden's attention. And she's like, who's ever done this was an assailant. And they need to be basically behind bars. And the warden's kind of not taking it lightly. But it doesn't seem like she's taking it as serious as she should. And she's telling Tracy, hey, like to protect everyone, my guards and the prisoners, you should probably put in like an anonymous tip. We could tackle this from all points in time and find the, uh, I mean, you find out about the ba the father of the baby. She's like, um, assault her. And he's like, what? Now, you said father, you mean assault her. So, what I think is also interesting, too, is she doesn't tell Kyle about it. She's like, yeah, I, I ran into the warden. He's like, oh, yeah, we just happened to run into each other, yada, 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 not telling him what's what. Because I guess she's worried that if she tells Kyle, Kyle will probably tell her not to look too deeply into it. Or maybe he will, like, be so concerned. About, like, he'll, have, he'll be too concerned about her doing it. So, the fact that she hasn't even brought it up to Kyle, I think it's kind of interesting. We'll see where that goes. That could be a nasty situation for her, just like the situation with um, Jackson as well. Once again, you got to be careful when you're accusing a guard and stuff like that because that could come back to bite you. You don't think it's home dude, right? Home dude that I talked about was like I, the most recent thing I saw. Papa, uh, Papa McCall from Teen, uh, Teen Wolf TV show. But most recently, I'm blanking on his character's name from um, City on a Hill. the most recent thing I'd seen him in. But I'm like he's too much of a character and especially his connection to Tracy. I'm like, is he going to end up being a baby daddy? It, it, it feels like it's got to be a reveal or a twist because that seems to be the person that Tracy's close with amongst like the guards there. So it could easily be someone else, but it feels like it's probably going to be the reveal is going to be that guy. It's got an inkling. So it, it, that situation is not going to play out the way Tracy thinks and hopes it will. Granted, her husband's a cop, so like they probably won't do anything to Tracy, but you know... That doesn't stop prisoners from doing stuff, but once again, like, just like, the, I keep, I wrote it up before, like, the Jackson thing, just like Kareem told him, like, you don't want to be in a situation where you get the, like, when you call in for backup and no one shows up, Tracy could end up in a similar situation, so we'll see how that, as well as all of this, ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. But really, that's all I wanted to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.